Hello, and welcome back to recitation. So in this problem, we have, uh, we, we're considering a function f of three variables, f of x, y, z, uh, and it's differentiable. And we don't know, uh, we're not told a, a formula for f. We just know that it's differentiable at this uh, point p, which is 1 minus 1, 1. And uh, we're told that the gradient of f at that point is this particular vector, 2i plus j minus 3k at that point p. So all we understand about f is, is how it looks around the point p. And um, now we, we also have this relation between the variables. So x, y, and z aren't, uh, aren't unrelated. They're, they're related by this uh, constraint that z is x squared plus y plus 1. So with this information, we want to uh, compute the gradient of a new function g. And the new function g is a function of two variables. And this function g is obtained from f by just uh, plugging in our relation for y. So we can use uh, our constraint to solve for y. And then this uh, function g is just f uh, with, the, with that constraint applied. And what we really want to do is we fi want to find the gradient of g uh, at, uh, at the point uh, 1, 1. So notice that uh, when g is equal to 1, 1, that means that, sorry, when the input of g is 1, 1, that means the input of f is, is p. Okay, so why don't you pause the video and uh, work this out for yourself. Uh, check back with me and we'll work it out together. Okay, welcome back. So let's get started. So this problem may not look like it's a uh, problem about partial derivatives with constraints, but that's what, it, that's what it's really going to boil down to. So uh, which is to say that when we want to compute So when we want to co answer this question by computing the gradient, the first thing we're going to want to do is compute the partial derivative of g and its variable x. And from the way we set up the problem, that's just the same as computing the partial derivative of f with respect to x and keeping z constant. Now remember, when we do partial derivatives with constraints, what, what's uh, important about the notation is what's missing. The variable y is missing, and that's because we are going to use the constraint to get rid of it. And uh, that's exactly how we define g. So this is, this is, uh, this is the, the key observation. So computing the gradient of g is just going to be computing these uh, partial derivatives with constraints. So, so we'll do that in a moment, and, uh, and I'll also Just write that the partial derivative of g in the z direction is partial f, partial z, now keeping x constrained. All right, so, uh, so we need to do these, we need to compute these partial derivatives with constraints. And so, um, so you remember how, how this goes. We need to, the way that I prefer to do this is to compute the total differentials. So uh, let's compute over here. Uh, The total differential df is uh, the total di differential of f is just the partials of f in the x direction, f in the y direction, f in the z direction, and each of these is multiplied by the corresponding differential. And uh, we don't know f, so we can't compute the partial derivatives of it in general, but we do know the, these partial derivatives at this point. And so uh, in the problem we were given that this is so 2dx plus uh, dy minus 3dz. So this is just using the fact that uh, the gradient of f we were given is 2 1 minus 3. Okay? So now, uh, so that's the total differential of f, and now we have this constraint. And remember, when we do these uh, partial derivatives with constraints, the, the trick is to take the differential of the constraint. So we had this equation z equals x squared plus y plus 1, 
And what we need to do is take its differential. So we have dz is 2x dx uh, plus dy. So that's our constraint. Uh, and now here we have this variable x, but we're not, we're not varying x in this problem. We're only focused on the point p. And at the point p, x is 1. So in fact, dz is just, uh, is just 2 dx plus dy. OK? So now uh, what we need to do is we need to combine uh, the, the constraint equation and the, di the total di differential for f into one equation. And so this is just linear algebra now. So I'll just come over here. And so we can rewrite, so we can rewrite our, different, our to total differential for uh, the constraint as saying that dy is equal to um, dz minus 2 dx. And then we can plug that back into our total differential for f. And so we get that uh, df is equal to 2dx plus, now I plug in dy here, so dz minus 2dx, and then finally minus 3dz. So altogether, I get a minus 2dz, because this and this cancel. OK, you get a minus 2dz. So what does that tell us about, uh, what does that tell us about the gradient? So remember that the, the differential now of g in its variables is, uh, is, is um, partial g partial x dx plus partial g partial z dz. And remember the trick about uh, partial derivatives and their relation to total differentials is that the partial derivative is just this coefficient. So, uh, so the fact that we computed df and we found that it was minus 2dz, uh, that tells us that, um, that, tells us that uh, dg, So the, the thing that we need to use is that uh, g, remember, is just the specialization of f. So dg is equal to df in this case, because uh, g is just a special case of f with constraints. So when we computed df here, we were imposing exactly the constraints that we used to define dg. And so what this uh, tells us is that we can just compare the coefficients here. And uh, so our gradient is 0 minus 2. So the 0 is because there is no dependence anymore on x at this point. Uh, there, there wasn't a dx term. There could have been, and there wasn't. And the minus 2 is because that's the dependence on z. OK, so this is a bit uh, complicated. So why don't we uh, review what we did? So uh, going back over to the problem statement, we first, we first needed to realize that saying that g was a function, uh, saying that g was a special case of, uh, of f where we use our constraint uh, to solve for y, uh, that's what put us in the context of, uh, of problems with constraints. So the fact that the dependence on, on, on y was so simple that we could just use the constraint. OK. And so then uh, the. So then what that allowed us to do is it allowed us to say that the partial derivative of g in the x direction is just the partial derivative in the x direction subject to the constraint. And that's what we did here. And uh, so then uh, the next steps that we did are the same steps that we would always do to compute partial derivatives with constraints. Um, and so we finally got a relationship that said that subject to these constraints, df is equal to minus 2dz. And the point is that g is just the function f with those constraints imposed. And so dg and df are the same. And so 
uh, in particular dg is minus 2 dz. And then uh, we remember that the, you can always read off partial derivatives from the total differential. They're just the coefficients. And so in the end, we got that the gradient was 0 minus 2. And I think I'll leave it at that. <laughs>